sitting a chair. <laughs> There we go. There you are. So, um, over everything else, I'm super enthused by storytelling. So, I really relish the chance to go into uh, the world of world building uh, in order to help structure this uh, amazing session we've got uh, coming up for us today. Um, and so, I found world building. Uh, you guys are obviously very familiar with it already. Um, it is not just about, obviously, creating immersive worlds for VR or AR. It's also about visioning and building the future um, of the world as we see it in real life as well. Uh, and, as, and, of course, also for authors when they're coming up with their sort of new story. And I just thought it would be really lovely to, to kind of structure our, our panel today with a series of world-building uh, exercises and tools and questions. Um, and, and we're going to go through them um, bit by bit. Uh, and what I did, essentially, is ask our panelists today to think about themselves as pitching us for the, the most positive and coolest visions that they can think about as, as um, related to each of these questions. Um, and also, how feasible is it going to be? You know, it all sounds amazing. Can we actually achieve it? So these are the two things that they are you know, going to be thinking about. And we've got six, six questions today to go through. So first off is the most general one, uh, which is, how does your world look in 2052? And what role do the creative industries have in it? And how do they shape it sustainably? I gave them a few subtopics to, to spark off, um, such as, what are the major natural resources and how are they used in your world and where, maybe which regions? What is the climate like? Is it consistent or changeable? What about the seasons? How do the people of your world deal with waste products? How important to the economy is the import or export of natural resources? And do the people of your world harvest resources responsibly with regard for the ecosystem? And does your government prioritize the interests of being rich and all prese rich presenting over the environment? So that's kind of slightly um, relating to maybe bling culture portrayed by certain creators or influencers. So over to you guys. Who would like to go for this one? <laughs> um, um. Okay, I don't mind going first. So uh, the first thing that I thought about for the world in 2052 was sort of inspired by Galwad. There was loads of themes of migration in that story. So I thought that populations would have shifted between continents due to climate change, bringing more diverse communities to the UK, but also just specifically to Wales. Um, the creative industries would be more responsible in the economy. So there'd be hundreds of thousands of jobs that were feeding families. They'd have to be more responsible and more sustainable as well in that sense. They'd have a significant responsibility as an industry. So um, coming from a creative technology background, um, I'm thinking about digital identities and the next generation, they're going to be native to creating their own identities. So to tackle waste, we'll be having virtual wearables, virtual assets to help provide a way of creating and sharing who you are as an individual because there'll always be a need to express your identity. Um, yeah, so I, I think I'm thinking about, um, yeah, just obviously the world of like remixing and um, taking things and obviously changing them into something else, like obviously like up upcycling and whatnot. And obviously the way I kind of vis visual visualize things in regards to, is that my, is that? I'm, I'm moving back as well, about. just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in regards to kind of like visualizing a world like, you know, obviously the notion of like bricolage or, um, you know, we kind of take certain things and just, yeah, remix it and turn it into something else. Um, and that's where, you know, that's how, that's how I like the future anyways, for things to be, you know, you know, like culture jamming type, type stuff, basically, yeah. Wow, that's a cool term. Can you, can you explain culture jamming a little bit? I think it's obviously the notion of, you know, taking things that might, you know, you know particularly things that are, you know, seen to be, you know, esteemed and, um, yeah, t t changing them and, you know, uh, in a way, kind of like normalizing them and breaking down, you know, the, 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 yeah, the structure around it, really. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of comes into your whole upcycle sort yeah, of theme yeah, there absolutely. as well. So on that note, actually, what is daily life like in your world? So going into, into the visceral feel of it, like 
What is maybe the belief system? Is it spirituality? Are there values? Are there any ethics? Um, how does the climate influence um, your world's inhabitants' choice of food and what they wear? Um, how have technological advances impacted the environment in 2052? Um, so what I thought was that daily life would be a bit more conscious and thoughtful. Um, as We as consumers are quite maybe automatically wasteful in our mindset, uh, whereas people in the future will have been educated to think twice before buying things. So yeah, I'd, I'd use the term mindful consumers. Uh, with the value system as well, I'd argue that it would be based on well-being, um, collaborative thinking and sort of kindness. So things that are uh, productive and moving forwards. Um, technology would also be more sustainable and brands would have changed the way that they might market new products. So yeah, just the whole scene of marketing, economy, consumerism would have shifted considerably. So you might be harnessing the power of marketing to already kind of embed these value systems. Yeah, yeah. so that would be the current change now, so that, that would impact the future of the creative industries. Cool. Well, as at, at the moment, we're all very excited about technology. Everyone really wants to learn to code or are developing their skills in that. Um, I'm reflecting of this idea of nature as well. So I think people will be more in tune with nature as a space to be inspired by both like nature with technology and how it works together to look after our planet and then also inspired inspired by it being a creative tool to create new ways of thinking, the amazing tools of, for example, the spider's web, <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> I think uh, we were talking about this a little bit earlier as well on something you, you mentioned, uh, was it Mycenae? Yes, yeah. yeah. We, I, in the Museum of Imagined Futures, the virtual reality project I worked on, we explored these themes around nature and technology, and mycelium one, was one of the worlds you could explore. Yeah, so actually, um, both of you have been young creators um, <laughs> within some unboxed um, uh, projects here, and, and yourself as well. Um, is it Sea Monster? Uh, no, it's a To the Moon. To the Moon, yeah. sorry, my bad. <laughs> Gawad? Yeah, Gawad. Uh, and Museum of Imagined Futures. Story trails. Story trails, exactly. Um, so, so bringing all of these sorts of um, you know, experiences to, to bear, would you say that there was a lot of collaboration involved? Yeah, definitely. Even just a sheer, a sheer amount of companies that came together to make Galwad happen. Uh, it was definitely a collective project. And I think that makes it even more valuable, knowing that loads of different people contributed to the end product, which was something to be really proud of, I'd say. Yeah, and I had a really cool um, sort of experience. You sent me the, the, the VR experience, and, I, and yeah, the, the, the mycelium was part of it, and also kale, I think, was, was uh, an imagined future as well, yeah, right? Seaweed. Kelp, um, Kelp yeah. uh, under the water. Um, do you imagine, like, we would still have silicon-based technology even? Like, you're, you're imagining things to do with nature, um, and what we might be able to learn from this sort of collective intelligence, maybe? Um, definitely we'll have emerging or advanced technologies embedded within our, our future, I think it will probably, I'm hoping it will be more people focused, people with nature, but I think there's always an exciting place to explore advancing technologies. I think it's about merging the realities of the real world with the virtual world and how they meet together. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. Thank you very much. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, collaboratively, um, collaboratively speak, I think there's a collaboration as well between, you know, ecological modernization and also, you know, I guess um, an ideological shift as well in regards to, you know, you know, we have, um, um, you know, technocrats that are working towards the, um, you know, finding answers through, you know, technology, but there's also a necessary, you know, ideological shift that can be found in, like, music culture, in the culture of, um, you know, style, fashion, and also, like, you know, films, TV as well. And I think, yeah, there is kind of this kind of fine, there needs to be this fine synergy between both, because um, 
obviously one thing that I'm particularly interested in is like you know this um, you know the metaverse, this digital world that we're, we're we're moving into, and obviously the place that 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 has for you know artists as well. And I think obviously you know I think you guys have really touched on that on that as well in regards to you know being able to invent worlds in 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 this digital world as well, and also you know the potential of that you know that being you know some sort of yeah answer or some sort of you know uh, yeah like answer to, to some of the um, some of the kind of like current issues that we'll face so hopefully in the future you know yeah we have kind of like real, real, real ideological shifts in regards to into regards to consumption and we embrace this this digital realm and you know because everybody just wants loads of stuff so we can do that up in in the metaverse which would be very lit to be honest yeah It'd be exciting I'm, I'm getting some questions that I might bring in a little bit later, but maybe specifically about the moon. <laughs> it's, no, but we'll, we'll check it out. So, on your world, whether it's the moon or not, um, what are the most popular creative or entertainment activities? So, some things to consider. Is this a world made magical by creativity? And or, how does creativity make this world a better place? Would this be from individual creators or groups? Are these companies or collectives or tech providers? Um, what forms of art are there? Do people even value art by now? Um, can everyone afford art by now? Or only the wealthy still, potentially. <laughs> now, what subjects does art concern itself with in this world in 2052? And what are the major festivals? I think that's a lot of really good questions. Um, they're really thought provoking, but uh, the main takeaways I had was that I think the future will be a blend of science, technologies, and the arts. So it's like the whole STEAM um, sort of theme that Unbox stands for, really. And yeah, it, it, the arts will have brought people together. So, albeit people from different fields and different uh, professionalities. I also want to think that the activities in the arts themselves are more accessible and inclusive. They'd represent identities from various different backgrounds. Um, and yeah, just be really representative of the UK as a whole. Um, I'd also hope that the definition of creativity and imagination have changed into something more hopeful and strong and that presentations of art, such as museums and galleries, have become increasingly funded by the public, so they have greater meaning in our society. Amazing. Um, I'd like to delve a little bit more into what's your personal definition of creativity in that case? <laughs> Uh, I, I'd say it's sort of the state of, I don't know, I feel like it's a kind of freedom when you're just in a flow, in the flow of something. Mm. Um, I don't know, I'd say a product of creativity is something you're proud of. That's yeah. what I'd say. Cool, amazing. Um, for me, I feel like experiential design is something that's already existing in our current time, but it might be a bit more celebrated, more the way that we look at um, past artists and creatives, it, these studios will become more of a normal thing to be celebrated rather than the individual. Um, ex so as we see with these creative technology projects, they can't be made by just one person. The beauty of making these projects is that you get to collaborate with different disciplines, people from different skill sets and I really also love the idea of for example a digital studio allowing a technologist to lead or the biologist or the writer and it shifting and it not just being the one person at the top leading these digital products and experiences. Yeah and I think also um the, the interdisciplinary changing of hats maybe mm -hmm. so I think you're mentioning earlier is it like the coder could also be yeah. lead creative actor <laughs> yeah no I love that idea I really love the idea of people not b being defined by one sort of role and I think with creativity it's not just about having that one skill set and as we can see in um, the new generation we're exploring different skills digital skills exploring what our future means and also just learning how to be an artist yeah so this kind of bi-directional mm -hmm. between group and individual and giving space for both yeah in a sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, what um, 
festival, so I like to party as well, and obviously, of you know, course. yeah, um, <laughs> uh, flying the flag for uh, obviously Tour de Mina as well. You get me the the the, the partying um, commission. No, I'm joking, but yeah, <laughs> it's quite it's quite yeah, varied. But I think in that sense, in that sense, just the essence of um, bringing people together, um, and you know, and how and the, the power of art to kind of bring people together as well. So you know, obviously. If I'm kind of like you know visualizing this world as well, it's kind of like yeah, how do we um, are we going to get to a place where art is you know really democratized and people can actually you know consider art as you know insane acts of you know evoking emotion out of people um, and you know, you know the, the movement and dance as well and where do we get to a place where people understand um, you know art you know in in yeah how, how do we bring art and, and, and normalize art and make art every day. And I think, yeah, I'm really big on, you know, 2052, you know, art being, you know, and, it, and obviously we're all we're going in that direction where art is means so many things to different people. I read somewhere that um, art is anything you can get away with, basically. Um, obviously without, you know, <laughs> taking away value from, you know, serious artists and that, but, um, you know, understanding that, you know, how do we use this art to kind of evoke emotion or say something or, or, or do something as well? So, yeah, I kind of see a world where a world where art kind of brings more people, more and more people together. Ultimately. So maybe art becomes more commonplace and not yeah, just yeah, yeah. what an artist does, but definitely maybe lots ground. of people or everyone is an artist, maybe. Yeah, 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 definitely a, a common space for people to kind of enjoy, like one big party, definitely. What about an interstellar? Synchronous festival. That would be serious. Yeah. If we on can do it on the moon, <laughs> let's help Elon Musk make that happen. I can't lie, that would be serious. I think that'd actually be an idea. Um, and on that note, how important is artificial intelligence to your creative world economy? Now, without that being very hackneyed, let's try to think about this in a slightly different way. So, how developed is the AI and what function does it perform in your world? How does this technology shape your life? your career, your daily routine. Do you still have a career? Is it something different? Yeah, something to think about. What is the level of technology? Do we, do we go along this route of high tech or have we actually decided to go Stone Age again? Um, or something totally different? Is technology use restricted in the uh, world? I would argue that it probably is use restricted because um, yeah, in my future vision of the world, I think that AI requires sort of like an easy license to obtain. So you do a short course that teaches you the basics about like copyright, what you can use, what you can claim as your own, um, and so on. And then you can use AI. So you sort of have to earn the right to use it. That's really interesting. So kind of like a governance? Yeah, in a way? it is sort of regulated a little bit. And would you be able to um, also then like sort of attribute kind of Mm, like, you know, made by such and such artists or trained on such and such artists' yeah. work, for example. Sort of like it's a software or something that you rely on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, for me, with artificial intelligence, it's such a broad and large subject. Um, but I'm, I think, first of all, about the relationship between the human, the creator, and the machine. And I think there's going to be so much so many new things being discovered in artificial intelligence that I hope that the human and the creator, the artist, it's, it's being managed and regulated. It's, not being, it's in the hands of not just one person. People can join maybe the artificial intelligence system and see how it began, change how it began, get access into the technology in ways that are, are not too alien to the normal So person. more explainable yeah. in a way, or more transparent, right, from like yeah. the whole process. Yeah, I think we need to have more transparency with artificial intelligence to be able to see because it's going to be invisible all around us. I think you're also mentioning um, the tool aspect of it, I suppose, right? Yeah, I think we all need, with digital skills, it's always something that the industry will always be ahead of the creator or the normal person. So having these sorts of environments and experiences with the people who are leading the technology, bringing the 
academics, the community and anyone else wanting to shape artificial intelligence would be really good. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll be excited to kind of see, you know, how AI um, like shapes the narratives of like things like mental health, um, like loneliness. I think even in regards to, you know, obviously how we perceive, you know, these narratives of like, you know, mental health and like loneliness and like, isolation. I'll be interested to see, I'll be really excited to see, you know, what role, you know, AI will play in that conversation as well, just to be obviously around you know, there's a lot of kind of like, you know, stigma around mental health as well. And, you know, I find it really, I think it would be kind of crazy like, if everybody just has like a little AI with them, you know, just, you know, when you're a bit lonely, just have a little AI with you. Um, that's just how I feel. Yeah, so I'm hearing from both of you, there's like potentially a, a, a collaborative again, sort of relationship. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm really seeing it from the perspective from obviously like just the, 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 the perspective of kind of like, you know, retelling, retelling things. Obviously the human cycle is kind of like, yeah, you're born and then you die as well. But like, you know, with artificial intelligence, you know, it might not be such thing as death as well as, mm -hmm. you know, I think as well. So we would be really interested to see, you know, it's this kind of like newfound knowledge as well. So, like going back to your point as well about being it being restrictive as well. That's that's something that's got that's really sparked yeah thoughts in my mind as well about how we move out. Really love to see you know how AI is used to kind of aid you know yeah narratives around mental health. You know, is this person really crazy? Do we give him this AI and then does this person become somebody else different as well? And do they are they do, this, does, do AIs nurture? But, Maybe I'm going too far, maybe I'm just getting you know, a bit, yeah. An intelligence in its own right. Yeah, literally, <laughs> is it is it this kind of nurturing thing that kind of teaches you? Because um, obviously on Tour the Moon as well, we had this AI called Luna, and obviously Luna was confronting things, um, you know, you know, worldly issues, um, you know, one being like race, for example, you know, and I guess is, is, is the gift in AI, is it is it really about, you know, brain training for, for people as well, can, you know, what is the scope for that as well to kind of, yeah, yeah, give people, you know, new ways of thinking as well, so it's kind of it's a, bit, a bit scary, but, you know, if you want to be optimistic about it, then, do you know what I mean? So almost actually not modeling humans, in a way, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, trying to give a different perspective by yeah. being itself, quote unquote. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start with you this time. What is the infrastructure, leading on from that, in your world? How are the creators treated and supported? So, some of the sparks we might think about here. How do we democratize and decentralize creativity? Kind of touched upon it a little bit. How does the gig economy become stabilized? Um, speaking from the creator perspective, maybe not the industry's perspective there. Um, what is the future of intellectual property here? We spoke a little bit about this already. Um, how can we support people to create new work? What is the potential for the application of creative tech in creating safe spaces for collaboration and creativity? What is a highly desirable job? Are there jobs still? Coming back to that. What is the monetary system? And are there different types of schools? If so, what are they for? Many questions. You don't have to choose all of them, obviously. I guess one thought I'd love to talk about is just obviously the freelance and gig economy. I think there is, you know, much work to be done in relation to, you know, creatives and, um, yeah, the freelance economy as well. I think particularly in regards to contractual law um, and employment law as well and in that, that, that world as well. And I think in like, you know, 30, 40 years to come, I'm sure there'll be like a manifesto in regards to how you work with freelancers. Obviously, just recently, um, um, you know, the, 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 the gig workers under um, Uber just got, you know, a really definitive case, one, in relation to um, their status. And I think there's a lot, there's a big conversation there in regards to, you know, the creative economy and, you know, the, the you know, percentage of freelancers that are in the creative economy as well. And I guess the protection and rights and their kind of safeguarding in that realm as well. And I think that's something that I would love to see in like 30, 40 years time, you know, the support and you know protection, and is there this you know new right system you know being offered to 
this self-employed because you you know this, this suggestion obviously you're self-employed but freelance these things are interchangeable do we kind of define things more um definitively should i say in the future and i would be really interested to see how you know law moves in the next kind of 30 years in regards to yeah the freelancer because it's like this big thing like even young people are saying yo i want to be a freelancer you know and you know what you what rights do you have you know what is your protection you know what is your um your go to and that kind of understanding is something that you know a lot of uh, people have a long way to go to a long way to go in terms of understanding what it means and even like the law obviously the you know british law has a long way to go in understanding what are the actual problems issues and how do we you know so well support freelancers in in this current system basically so that's really interesting that you mentioned it is currently seen as interchangeable yeah. like in terms of yeah um uh, the gig economy, like in terms of yeah, self-employed and freelance. How would you say there is a distinction currently in your mind to that? And I mean, could there be a future where people are merely allocating their own time towards things that they're interested in, and then they get remunerated for it? Yeah. For example. Yeah. Um, so, so I think being self-employed, freelancing, are these things interchangeable? Maybe under the eyes of the. So maybe under the eyes of the law, these things are interchangeable, but I don't necessarily, I think there is, I think there needs to be, yeah, a well-defined difference in what it means, because I think there's this new, um, new worker that's come in as well, who doesn't want to, you know, do all of this, you know, staying on this and all of that, wants to kind of dibble and dabble as well, and I think that freedom is a, a newly defined freedom, but also, you're not, you're not, you're not, I guess, I don't know, self, that self-employed notion comes with, yeah, less, less protection as well. And I think with freelancers, yeah, you can't, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it needs to be more well-defined. And I have a lot of, um, I have a strong opinion on how well-defined it needs to be. Um, and I feel like as a society, we're, we're not far from getting there. The more people that go on the tagline of being a freelancer, I think even if you go on like websites like Fiverr, for example, mm. and all of that kind of stuff, and you kind of see worlds where you know people can you know you know bid for certain jobs and all of that kind of stuff as well. And I think that economy is something that needs to be you know supported and invested into as well. Mm. Um, and people shouldn't be afraid of investing into that 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 economy. But also, it's kind of like what a freelancer is. That's that's something that answers that I don't have to have at the moment in regards to, yeah, how do you define a freelancer? But I'm sure in my heart, my humble <laughs> heart, that there is a difference between, you know, being self-employed. Obviously, it's just not not put out there legally yet. Yeah, and it's still, I think, I mean, even now, for example, if you're an actor, you could be part of equity, for example, and that's yeah. a union that sort of protects your rights as, like, you know, in terms of, like, a minimum wage for a job or whatever, and then might have a similar one for music and then you know potentially there's something that's a bit broader yeah. across the sphere because there's obviously people as you say dibbly dabbling yeah, in yeah, lots of areas things, mm -hmm. you know? yeah. um, so I'm trying to my idea is basically it's kind of coming from this idea of being an independent creative um, but more on the side of being a digital independent creative. So looking at this like digital, um, base, the, the, you know, as we see with NFTs, that ownership. So digital ownership at the moment, we're seeing it's being decentralized with like yeah. images, videos, but I'd like to see it go a bit deeper. So it could go with code, with SDKs, with tools, even though I, the way that I learned my skills was through open source, which I think is something that I would also really love to see continuing in the next 50 years. Um, I'd like to find that balance between having open source software and opportunities and knowledge exchange, but also giving the creators who are of the next generation is going to get more and more skills in creative coding, but we want to be able to find a way to protect that code in a way that we can still collaborate, but also give them that identity and basically way of making a living. Yeah, so kind of like licensing the mm -hmm. code available freely, just like you would with 
with any sort of, yeah, stock photos. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be a really good way to also allow more collaboration as well. I think that we've probably got startups who are making tools that maybe could be used with artists or yeah. other people doing creative work. And that's something that, yeah, just making more of a like lively, yeah. intellectual property for digital assets. It's like the three C's, like, well, not competitive, more collaborative, mm -hmm. while still having credit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that creative infrastructure is built into the education system in the future and creative careers are encouraged. Um, as opposed to now where they're sort of ignored like in school. I found that you get clear-cut ways to like, if you want to become a doctor, you have to do this, this BA and then this course and then you have to get experience here and it's all very laid out and then you'll get like a guaranteed set salary. Whereas for the creative industries, it's, you just don't get any guidance on how to do it. Um, so in order to achieve this, I'd say there needs to be more funding available mm -hmm. and creatives need to be more supported, maybe through um, like set mentorship schemes that are stabilised through laws or regulations, just so that it actually happens, you know, just so things are put in place mm -hmm. to support young people. I think that's, that really like strikes a chord, yeah. Just going to add to that as well, just in regards mm -hmm. to, um, I guess, that um, socialisation as well, you know, from the kind of like young ages as well, it's kind of like preparing people with the possibilities of, you know, um, job roles as well. And um, yeah, you know, you can be like, you know, like gig workers is the new sexy, freelancers is the new sexy, all of that kind of stuff. And I think there is that, um, yeah, lack of, socialization from um, yeah primary school you know through everybody has you know you do this very kind of like simplistic understanding of, of work roles as well and what it is to be a, a creative as well for example um, and I think the possibilities where we kind of educate people from a young age in regards to you know what are the potentials is really important I believe yeah, and I think there's, um, I mean, a bit of a sort of stratification, isn't there? It's like, you're a creator, you're not. <laughs> or, you know, um, this is art, and you go to, you know, art college, for example. Uh, yeah. But actually, you could maybe do it in a different way, and then how is that actually, um, say, maybe more supported, and actually that could help with maybe some of the mental health questions we were talking about um, earlier as well. And I would argue that storytelling in what is traditionally seen as non-storytelling or non-creative um, environments as well. So how can that be seen as maybe more normalised as well across yeah, the Yeah, I think board? it's just sort of about redefining what creativity is and like what should be valued in our society. I think if those two principles are sort of changed and they adapt with the principles of the future, then yeah, it'll probably be a lot easier to get into the creative industry and be more fulfilled as well by your career. Mm. Absolutely. And actually, that, that leads very nicely onto our <laughs> final question. Um, in our world in 2052, right, what languages do the people in your world speak? And I don't mean French and English, <laughs> for example, right? What's the importance of an interdisciplinary approach? Um, how do we create a communication framework and language system to enable this interdisciplinary approach? Um, are there publicly run communication systems? I was going to say something just around, yeah, language as well. And I guess, um, yeah, just kind of like what the dominant discourse is around, um, yeah, language and use of language. And I feel like obviously, you know, um, yeah, I think there is a, yeah, there's almost like a gatekeeping process in regards to communication effectively as creatives as well. Um, and I would, yeah, really say that we need to break this all down. We need to democratise what it is. Like I can be an intellectual and still um, operate with, um, with um, a manner of speaking that might not be everybody's privy to as well. So um, I think there is something there around, you know, you know, I think, yeah, there's a, there's a, there is a battle. I think there's a, obviously, there's a dominant discourse in how, you know, things are understood and how things are spoken. But also, I think there is, you know, the task is really for many creatives to kind of, like I said, to, you know, remix and, and yeah, you know, just really kind of, like, break down these, um, yeah, archaic ways of thinking as well, you know, and, you know, knowledge, knowledge being this, 
you know, vocabulary book and lack of knowledge be in, I don't know, rap music or something like that as well. So I think there's a, um, um, yeah, one, one task that I just believe is to kind of, you know, put two things together and let's see how we can, can really, you know, uh, blur the lines in which things are understood um, and which, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, blur the lines in which things are understood really. And I think communication and, you know, the variety of communication has that, will have that power to, yeah, really, yeah, blur the lines of what is, what is, what is this and what is that really. Something that might be started maybe early in life then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd also argue that it's not just how we communicate, but it's what we communicate mm. about. So mm. I think all of us sort of envision a more um, representative, more yeah. diverse future. So it's about bringing new voices and yeah. new lived experiences, new stories to the table. And I think that's what will really be a key point, just like what they want to talk about, what they think is valued in the future. And perhaps give an equal value. Yeah. yeah this equitable yeah, approach. How do, we, how do we define that as well? Yeah. Who defines that as well? Yeah. Like we need to we need to look for some people and tell them that. Or know. self definition. Yeah. 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 If yeah. I so, say it's important, um, I expect you to maybe yeah, honour that. That's, yeah. That's, that's definitely it. Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. Um. So I was thinking about. I d I went to university and I did an art degree. And one of the main things that I got out of it was how to be a creative in creative situations. And I think that would have been something that would have been good for me to learn at a younger age, like it could start out when I'm five. Yeah. So things like learning how to experiment, put yourself in, just do things that you don't feel comfortable doing, make weird things <laughs> <laughs> and know how to analyse and reflect, also learn how to critique each other and be critique yourself. Those are the sort so I, a network as well, chat, those sorts of they things. They sound like life skills. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what I got. Just creative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that sort of thing was really for me the most valuable thing I got out of my degree was knowing how to be a creative in other places and spaces. Mm. So kind of like a life language. Mm -hmm. Could there be something that crosses all of these of different course. silos? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I think it's yeah, really good to be able to reflect on yourself and just be in these uncomfortable positions of what you're making and be okay with showing and sharing with people something that you're not comfortable with as well. Yeah. I think these need to be like rights for every, mm -hmm. I think these are kind of like, you know, in regards to communication, I think these need to be, you know, rights for, you know, people and humanity, like what, what, are, the, you know, what are your kind of like creative rights as you know, as humans as well, you know, experimentation and yeah. these kind of things, and you know, having the possibility for that as well will really open doors for you know, yeah, d democratizing what what art is basically. Yeah. I think mean, that would be, yeah, you know, indispensable for for humanity really. If we if we have, <laughs> you get me, people are allowed to experiment. Uh, you know, and that's your kind of like your human right. You know? Sounds like we, we we need to give our future world. Um, a name <laughs> so to really make it come to life because it's going to be here we're going to be here in 2052 in not too long um, and what if we think about it as our sort of um, democratized forum of discussion right we don't have to think about it as planet earth necessarily but if 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 a, a word a name and a phrase comes to mind what would you aim for of our world of 2052 uh, I don't know. Maybe you, maybe those three C's that you said they were quite good. But in <laughs> summary, yeah, definitely, I'd probably put like collective in it because I feel like that just signifies a lot of what we've been talking about, like shared responsibility, shared creation, all of that sort of mm -hmm. thing. I think maybe I might go with a word that's being used quite a lot already at the moment: decentralized. So mm, yeah, yeah, just thinking about how we can be in, nurture individuals in a community. Nice. Um, I think I'll call it, um, it just came to my mind, so I'm just gonna say, you know, life after TC, you know. That's, nice. Yeah, it just came to my mind, so I'm just I gonna, like it, yeah. it's about the intuition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and with that, um, this is us uh, saying goodbye. <laughs> Um, uh, we had a, a lovely couple of days here um, and looking forward to 2052. Yes. Yeah. See you there. <laughs> <laughs>